This is a parky blues for my friend Allison, wherever she is now. She's the one who said, tell the engineer he got to stop this train. She said, tell the engineer he got to stop this train right now. Tell the engineer I got to get off. Find some shade. Wait there for some other ride to come along. She said, tell the engineer he got to stop this train. She begged me, tell the engineer we got to stop this train. Take me home, she said, stop. Stop, take me home, she said, stop, stop, right now, this ride has gone on far too long. I gotta get off, I gotta get off. Wayne, tell that engineer, he gotta stop this train. She said, Wayne. Please tell that engineer to stop this train. I want to get me a beer, a sandwich or two, and I'll climb on off of this train. Lay me down by some tree. Wait for some better ride. Tell that engineer he got to stop this train. I to tell that engineer he gotta stop this train. I want a smoother ride. I want a smoother ride. Stop, she said, stop. She said, stop this train. She said, I want to get off. In most jazz bands, like rock and roll bands really, it's the bass and the drums kind of hold everything down and together. This poem is called Baseless Parkinson's. The problem with Parkinson's is the bass player is completely unreliable. So there's no one to hold it together, nothing to hold down the improvisations. The jam falls apart, each instrument collapses in a heap or flies wildly off with little reference to the others. Churning random tremors locked below the frozen surface, making pointless noise. Bass player is just too wasted to drive it all towards music. Cinemit sits in, but brings much weaker chops. We need a good, strong bass player. One day I was listening to a lot of noisy jazz in my earbuds. My wife doesn't always appreciate my musical tastes. After a while I switched and I came across a video of a cellist named Dobrawa Sosher. I believe that's how you pronounce her name. And the video was shot in an old abandoned church in Poland. My poem is called Consolation of Cello. She plays among sanctuary ruins. I am a sleepless, shattered wreck. She plays in a shaft of yellow light. I am a shadow hovering between columns. 
She plays with her hair falling into her face. I am a body heaving with sorrow. She plays, although dust has crept and settled everywhere, I am the size in the roofless vestibule. She plays without thinking of the notes. I become the strings she touches and bows. This poem is called For Real, jamming at the Cornelia Street Cafe in the West Village, 2008. It might not sound like a parky jazz poem at first. You might think it doesn't have anything to do with Parkinson's. But I assure you, it does. Think of being seen or not seen, being heard or not heard. One of the things that often happens with Parkinson's disease is we become somewhat diminished, or we feel considerably diminished, and our presence in the world doesn't feel the same as it once did. That's why I call this poem For Real. I was ready. With a set I had confidence in, but oh man, I was nervous. Golda introduced me. I shook hands with the two supporting musicians, sax and bass, turned, took the mic. I was able then to stand for as long as it took, <sighs> sucked in a deep breath, waited, looked back, nodded to the musicians. They looked at each other, shrugged. The bassist, a short, petite white woman, chose a chord, a rhythm, pulled the first doom, 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 mid-range notes, simple, almost mainstream cliché, then bent a phrase, slid sideways. The sax blew something nice, not avant-garde, but not lazy. They were flirting, easing into a groove. It was background music. They were winking at each other, taking it easy on me. When I dropped in, unlikely, crosswise, leaned against the rhythm and swung toward the bass, slipped under her phrasing. She countered cautiously. The sax came round just in case he had to catch me. I gave her some sass. The sax queried. I gave him something to play with, and the bass took us deeper down to see how deep we could go, paused long enough for me to lay out a nasty, Cool suggestion. <laughs> the sax dipped approvingly, shot up with a test flight, the bass tenderly vamping. I danced in the blast. Lights swirled around, threw down some hallelujah words, which meant, oh, yeah, baby, oh, yeah, I hear you, let's go. They paused an unnoticeable moment, smiled at one another, looked at me like, oh, brother, Hold on tight, and it was on. We traded solos, sat out, found the holy trinity, all the sacred spaces, time and time again. They were listening. They knew I was listening. We wove and passed and tested each other like basketball players, jammed as one, my poems an instrument in the mix. And I was for real, man. I was for real. And afterwards, Steve Dalachinsky himself used those very words to describe me. And then we went out to a little club where I watched Steve jam with my favorite improv free jazz quartet called Tess. Ah, I was for real, man. And so was my dream. I actually wrote this poem for a uh, Davis Finney Foundation summit in April of 2021 during the height of the pandemic. So it was, of course, on Zoom. So I want to share it again today. It's all jazz. 
Improvise, listen, incorporate, integrate, improvise. Listen, feel deeply, play, listen. Feel further in, further down, play that. Listen, improvise, feel each note, each space between. Feel the way notes run together, make a phrase, anticipate, improvise, incorporate, integrate, listen, play. Play, listen, feel, anticipate, no wrong notes, only new moments, opportunities to listen and improvise, trust. Trust. Your ear, your heart, your voice, your deepest affections, emotions, questions, celebrations, fears, feel without thinking. Just trust and feel flow the way water always flows towards free. Free expression, free feeling, free spirit. No matter the pain, play that. No matter the suffering, play that. No matter despair, anxiety, depression, even death, play that. Always the ways you hurt, play that. Play that. All the little things bring you pleasure and joy. Play that. Feel it all. Improvise, incorporate, improvise, integrate, above all, before all, during the entire set we call this life. Listen. Feel. Go with that. Play it. You are an instrument, and you are the instrumentalist. You are the source. The sound, the rhythm and flow, the music itself. You are the body, and you are the soul. It's all jazz, man, and woman, and all you others. It's all jazz. There's only this one night at this particular club called Earth. So play. Play. Freely play. Pull it all out there. <sighs> On the stand. For all to hear. Leave space for your bandmates. Because it's all best when the jam is cooking for everybody. Whatever you feel, whoever you are, whenever it is, play that. Because, brothers and sisters, it's all jazz. It's all jazz. I call writing poetry metaphor medicine. And I call these jazz poems parky jazz. Jazz is, for me, the most powerful, meaningful, suggestive, creative metaphor for living with Parkinson's well, or as well as one can. This poem's an example. Medicine jazz as necessary for pain. Straight up raw. No, hang in there. Honesty without wrapping ribbons. Clarity. No fog brain. Yes, 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 oh yes, to pain's inevitability. Unrefined fuel for the worn out and worn down. We're falling here. The end already in my wobble gait and that old SOB gravity. Ha! That force, another meat heap, still loving love, straight ahead, without adornment, coarse, crude, even vulgar. Pain is not polite. Why should I pussyfoot and parse words like a damn slave? I want jazz here. I want jazz here. I want some jazz here. Didn't happen to do boo. I said, I want some jazz here. 
Dum, 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 dum. Ba, dun, 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 da. Jazz is advanced anti-gravity chamber. Beyond big pharma, NASA, commercial, cannabis, no god has promised more than jazz for transcending the dizzy solar system. Has my medication kicked in yet? <laughs> Are my words gravel salad? I, I hear my unwept protestations like minds collapsing inside. Do you? This is the deepest cut of all. Pushing up to all fours, lifting this left leg, planting it, its foot outside, this left hand, ass up, straining against the Earth's orbit like an infant, toddler, teeter, ponder, then ashamed. Pain is a bare-fisted bully, unforgiving, neutral, as electrocution, dead weight. More jazz here, more jazz. Oh, please give me boom, da, ba, boom, boom, do, ba. Medicine. Doom, boom, boom, wah. Medicine. Wah. Doom, boom, doom, jazz. Give it to me straight up. No chaser. I said straight, no chaser, intravenous now. Enough levitation to janky dance like my body is mine. Like my body is still mine. Like my body is again mine. Like my body belongs to me and the pain is not crushing me. Oh, jazz. Give me that jazz medicine. Do, 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 do. This poem's called Small Blue Victory. I don't count them, I just write poems about them. Crawling out of the funk junk like the honey sun came and dragged this old swamp body up, made me tea, put on Tony Joe White's ain't going down this time. Touched my cheek saying, baby, what a baby, what a day. Sipped that golden brew between sighs. It's all right. It's all right, baby. Uh-huh. It's all right. I'm telling you, it's all right. I know of three jazz musicians um, who had Parkinson's or have Parkinson's. Um, one of them is named Sangeeta Michael Berardi. Sangeeta Michael Berardi was a guitarist. What you would call a guitarist who played on the outside, that is, he didn't play traditional mainstream jazz very much. He was more free improvisational jazz. But of course, Parkinson's made it very difficult to play an electric guitar. One morning, he was sitting at the breakfast table, and his tremors were particularly bad. And he had a bowl of cereal sitting on the table in front of him. And he dipped the spoon into the bowl. And his tremors got worse as he tried to lift the spoon, and the spoon began to knock on the side of the bowl and it started to make this sound and he realized suddenly that sound was musical Once he discovered that he could still make music even when his tremors were the worst and he was sitting at the breakfast table, it gave him a lift and he got back in the studio. So that's why I call this poem Sticks and Spoons and it's a tribute to Sangeeta Michael Berardi on his 81st birthday. Sangeeta bells, 
Sun Gita bowls, tremor beats, vibrant rhythms, tremor beats, vibrant rhythms, sound rain in the aural dust. Sun Gita, the patterns chaos makes in the air ripple and glide, bumpy clatter ride. Sangeeta sticks and spoons release spirit voices in the hard body. Sangeeta, every crucible waits Every concavity quivers, Sangeeta to be wrung again and again and again. Sangeeta, bells, Sangeeta, bowls.